Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2024 release Godzilla X Kong The New Empire, which I don't understand why they just didn't make it Godzilla and Kong or Godzilla ampersand Kong or something. The whole X things mean t means like times. So it's like Godzilla times Kong. I don't know. It, it's a weird title, but anyway, small thing. Uh, I will say going into films like this, I never expect a whole lot. Because, uh, historically speaking, Godzilla films are terrible with story. It's just kind of all about the action. Um, I enjoyed this one enough. I didn't think it was bad. Uh, it it does uh, kind of happen not too long after the previous one that they released, uh, where Kong and Godzilla first threw down, which was okay. I think I liked this one more than that one, actually. I'm At least I'm pretty sure I did. Uh, there was some pretty dumb stuff with that one. But anyway, let's get into it. Uh, directed by Adam Wingard, who did Godzilla vs. Kong. Yeah, that was the previous one. The Death Note movie, live-action Death Note movie. Blair Witch, the remake, which I've heard wasn't good. Your Next, which is solid. And A Horrible Way to Die, which is also solid. Uh, written by Wingard, as well as Simon Barrett, who wrote Frankenfish, A Horrible Way to Die, Your Next, the Blair Witch remake, Seance, which is awful. And also written by Terry, Terry Rossio, who wrote Godzilla vs. Kong, Pirates of the Caribbean movies, all of them, uh, Deja Vu, Shrek, Small Soldiers, and Little Monsters. Yes, the one with Howie Mandel and uh, Fred Savage. Um, that individual has a lot of writing credits, so maybe that's why this movie's better than the last Godzilla one. Uh, and this is available streaming on Max, so if you have Max, you can watch it for no money, which is great. Uh, quick synopsis, don't want to give too much away, but it's basically, like I said, picking up not that long after Godzilla vs. Kong. So basically, it's uh, got, uh, Kong kind of hanging out in uh, Hollow Earth, which if people don't know what Hollow Earth is, it's basically this, there's like a portal, there are these portals that will open up on... Uh, planet Earth, which can be triggered by the organization Monarch, which kind of monitor these godlike creatures like Godzilla and Kong. And so basically he's hanging out there, but then finds out, you know, there's something awry, there's something gone wrong, and something that is a threat to potentially regular Earth. So Kong is teaming up with Monarch, going to get things done, basically. Meanwhile, Godzilla is on Earth, wreaking havoc and it's kind of like we don't know why he's doing this we don't know what he's doing and we don't know where things are going with Godzilla so um don't want to talk too much about that because you know you, you want mystery to this film but obviously this film is about the action sequences this is about Godzilla this is about Kong and this is about the new evil and when they come together and the fight scenes basically and I think they deliver pretty well when it comes to those fight scenes I did find them relatively riveting uh, and some of the other storyline stuff as far as Kong and Godzilla go was fun, in my opinion. But, no surprise, the human story sucks. Uh, <laughs> sucks horribly. But anyway, uh, let's, let, let me go through my notes first. I'll talk a little bit more about that. The beginning has, an inter has interesting looking creatures, but you're kind of like, what is the point of this? So this is where they start in Hollow Earth, and they're basically showing what Kong is doing kind of doing his Kong thing before we know anything is really wrong. So I guess it's just kind of like to establish things that like, oh, Kong chilling, doing Kong things. But it does go on too long and you're just kind of like, we could have just started things before this. And that's the thing, like this film's runtime, it's a little bit under two hours. I think it's like an hour and 54 minutes or something. Um, honestly, though, for that runtime, I don't think the pacing is too bad. The pacing is bad when it's all of the human story-related stuff. That stuff literally, in my opinion, should have just been deleted from the film because it is so boring. It is snooze-fest anytime the humans are on. And literally, you could have deleted all the human scenes for the most part, and it would have been a better movie, better pacing, more engaging, and you, do, you really wouldn't be missing much of anything. Because as is typical with the Godzilla films, except for Godzilla Minus One, the human story is stupid and pointless. But the problem is they need to find a way to, like, you know, engage the audience and make them care. Like, oh, there's human people that you can kind of connect with. But you can kind of connect with Kong and Godzilla, really. So, you know, we don't need it. 
we don't need the human story. I want the next Godzilla and Kong movie, or just Godzilla, or just Kong movie, to be just them. No people. Or, like, minimum just some random people that we don't need to get into very far that are just like, oh my gosh, they're messing things up. Or, oh my gosh, call Godzilla, call Kong, we need help. Like, that's it. That's all I want. I just want the action. Anyway, uh, the characters do feel over the top. That's one of the other problems with the humans of this. Like, the characters are very poorly written. They're very poorly developed. They don't even really develop all that much. They are just, like, over the top. They're stereotypes. They're ridiculous. They try to throw humor in with them, and it just doesn't work. It's, like, really cringe humor, and it again, like a lot of the human aspect of this film really slows things down. You're just like, okay, this doesn't go. Can we just get to the action? Let's get to the good stuff. Uh, there are attempts at humor that get in the way of the movie, like I was just saying. The story seems okay in the beginning. It gets a little, it, it definitely gets better as it goes on. At first I was like, I don't know about where we're going with this storyline. And then as things kind of progress, and then it's like Kong trying to get things done, and then what's Godzilla doing? Like, it gets more intriguing. So those aspects of the story are pretty engaging, and in the beginning you're a little bit, or I was, a little skeptical. But it got pretty solid, honestly. Uh, it looks great with plenty of camera movement and good-looking CGI. Very good-looking CGI, so thumbs up on that. I mean, big budget, so you would assume that that would be the case. But it looks really good, and um, yeah, it's very well directed, honestly. Cinematography is wonderful. Lots of very engaging, interesting camera movements, especially with the fight scenes. Uh, so from a visual standpoint, it's aesthetically extremely pleasing as a film, which is exactly what these types of films should be, because there's not going to be a whole lot of substance, and we know that going into it. Uh, the film treats all of the ape creatures basically like humans, which is weird, because... You know, it's not really a spoiler. You find out very early in the film that there are, like, other ape creatures like Kong, although they're not as large as Kong, really, um, but not far off. But they um, they're, they they treat them very human-like, which, which just feels really weird and off, and it just leads to this situation where they can do things that you feel like, I don't think they can do that because in previous movies, Kong acts like an ape, basically and then these ape-like creatures like all of a sudden they're way more human and it's like i don't think so like with how they use their hands and their agility and how they socially interact and like kind of like even like expressions and like talking type stuff which it just does not make it, it doesn't fit it feels weird it feels very off i'm sure some people are fine with it but for me it kind of bothered me uh I kind of do and kind of don't like this idea of the hollow earth realm. Like, in a sense, I think it's kind of stupid where it's like, oh, we have this portal on earth and then we can go to this other place. And it's just like, why don't we just have this happen on earth then? Because then it like, I don't know. But I, I feel like it's, you know, higher stakes for, for audience members if it's actually happening on earth, which is, you know, what's happening with the Godzilla portions of this film. But... I do like it in the sense of, like, it gives us an opportunity to see different creatures and different environments, in a sense. So that aspect of it is cool. It, it leaves more open to you don't necessarily know what you're going to see, as opposed to on Earth, you know what you're going to see. Because it's going to take place in some sort of city or landscape that you're familiar with. So, uh, again, the human portions of the film are literally the worst portions of this film. Uh, the Godzilla and Kong mayhem is what's fun and engaging. That's where it wins. Uh, things in this movie have the dumbest names. That's the other, other thing. They'll literally call... I mean, I can't tell you names for a lot of the things I'm thinking of because it would potentially ruin some stuff about the film, but whenever the monarch people, these humans, have names for things that are you know not known to common man... Um, they're stupid. They're literally like the stupidest names you could come up with. It's just really bad. Uh, and then the ending is okay. Um, I didn't hate the ending. I liked it. I didn't love it. It's a solid enough ending for what this film is. 
But this isn't a film that's going to blow a whole lot of people away, but it is satisfying, I would say. So out of five stars, half stars in play, I'm going to give it a solid three-star rating. So that's honestly pretty good, in my opinion, for these types of films, especially this this late in the franchise. So I would see another one. I definitely would. It's just turn your brain off and just have a good time. Relax, which is exactly what I did when I watched this film. So... Uh, yeah, now give me your thoughts. You can put it down in the comments. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you in between on this one? Um, and we can talk it out. You can do spoilers in the comments. That's totally fine. Give me a thumbs up on this video if you want to help me with that YouTube algorithm. I appreciate that. I also appreciate if you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because that is literally your best way to show your appreciation and repay me for all the free content I keep putting out there. Uh, also, you can hit the notification bell button, and then you'll know when I'm putting up new videos, which I'm doing at least a very short one every single day of every single year at this point. It's wild. But anyway, thanks everyone for taking your time to watch this, and until next time, keep it brutal.